Hi, brothers and sisters. It's uh, 5.33 a.m. here, and um, I was awoke this morning at 2.02 a.m. with uh, the voice of the Lord. I heard an, uh, him audibly, and it woke me out of a dead sleep. And um, I've been pr praying a lot, <clears throat> and uh, praying a lot about some dreams that the Lord gave me, and whether to share them or not. And I believe that the dream I had last night and this audible of the voice of the Lord this morning kind of confirms that. And so I want to share that with you. Um, so the dream I had was I was in my neighborhood, in my house, and uh, the UPS or the mail system had been delivering these boxes to me on accident. I guess it was like they, not on accident, but they were getting the address wrong. They were getting the boxes uh, confused. They weren't delivering it to the right house. And I was standing in my room or this back room and um, I was looking at all these boxes and they had different addresses on them but I knew they were for my neighbors people in my neighborhood and <clears throat> I'm looking at the addresses on these boxes I'm like yeah okay that guy's closed that guy's over here you know it's the same street I'm on or it's a street over anyway I opened one of these boxes to see I was curious what was in these boxes and so I opened this one box from this guy. It belonged to this guy and I'm looking inside and, and it has like children's stuff in there. Uh, boxes of crayons and uh, colored markers. It's like the covenant with man, right? The rainbow is the new covenant with man. And... Um, like there were some old VHS tapes in there of like princesses and princess cartoons and um, there was like this uh, huge Lego set with all these pieces colored you know Legos are colored you put them all together and uh, um, I don't know there was just all this s gifts for children and I knew by looking in this box that a man had a little girl and a little boy. And I knew in the dream that it was days until Christmas. And this man needed this package. I knew that he'd been waiting for it to give these gifts to his kids. And uh, he needed it before Christmas. And I knew it was like only a couple days or like three days. And I knew that if I sent it back out through the mail to his address, that he wouldn't get it in time. So <clears throat> I went outside and. Okay, so what this means, a recap is. The, the items in these boxes represent the gospel, the gospel of grace. Uh, it represents. uh um, the covenant, the new covenant with man and these children are God's children and they're, they need bef because Christmas that's act actually, it doesn't like, uh, it represents the rapture. You guys, Jesus was born, we're his seed and we are the baby to be born. So Christmas represents rapture, not an actual rapture on Christmas, but that's how the Lord has shown me through my dreams over the years. And the children needed these gifts, but they were getting lost in the mail and they were coming to my house. So it was my duty to hurry up and give these things back to their send, give them to their owners. And so I went outside and there was a lady out there and I said, well, where, where does this uh, guy live at? And I I forget his name, but I told her his name. And she goes, well, he lives right behind your house on the next road. And I could kind of see his house. 
And I said, well, run over there and get him and I'll get his box. So she ran over there and he came in my house and I was like, okay, is this your name and address? And he was like, yeah, that's me. And, um, he was so excited. You guys, he was like, I've been waiting for these gifts for so long. And I'm so glad that you're giving to me right before Christmas. <laughs> like they couldn't have come right on time at a better time. And, um, so that was the end of the dream. And it was a confirmation to my prayers that people are not being given the right gospel. They are not receiving these gifts that God wants to give them of eternal life and everlasting life and promises and, and be in his new covenant. And, um, and then I woke up with an audible and this is what I heard. I heard the Lamanites, the Lamanites are getting a blood transfusion tomorrow. And my eyes popped open and I thought, is the TV on? That was the first thing is, was that the TV? No, there was no TV on in the whole house. So I, and then I began to realize, oh, I just heard the Lord. Okay. I better, I better get my phone out and write this down. The Lamanites are getting a blood transfusion tomorrow. And so I looked up Laman and as soon as I typed in Laman, it came up Lamanites. There's actually a Lamanite. Um, and what it is, is a group of people that are associated with the Mormons that it's like their little history where they talk about North America and it was like a North America Indian tribe, um, or something like that called the Lamanites. And I am not endorsing the book of Mormon. I'm just saying the Lord has ways to show us things. Um, the Mormon people, they are in works for their salvation. The Mormon people believe that you gain eternal life when you do everything that you can in your flesh, in your flesh and blood. When you do every kind of goodness in your, you see what I'm saying? They believe that you might have eternal life. You might have salvation. They, they, they do works and, and, and everything under the sun and then some to try to earn their salvation. And we know the Bible says that, um, it's by faith alone through God's grace alone that we're saved and that no flesh or blood will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's what we have today, uh, going around on YouTube um, people trying to glorify their flesh, glorify, glorify, glorify their filthy rags and their, their blood is tainted. Their DNA is full of sin and they think they can earn their way to heaven or earn their sal or keep or keep their salvation through their works of their nasty flesh and DNA. But we know that's not true. It's by faith alone and Christ alone. And, uh, you believe it, you confess it, that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe it in your heart and you're saved and you're sealed and you're made righteous and sanctified and justified and your, your dirty DNA and your dirty blood will not earn your way to heaven. And people confuse, uh, sanctification in your flesh, uh, with, with salvation, uh, just by faith, they want to put it all together and, and say that you have to earn your salvation because they, they don't know how to rightly divide the word there. They do videos like debunking eternal salvation or once saved, always saved. What, what debunking eternal everlasting life. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then they use all these scriptures to they have, they have no idea what they're talking about. It's a sad thing and they're scaring people and, uh, putting people back under fear and condemnation because, um, 
They'll never, their blood will never be good enough. Only the blood of Jesus Christ is good enough to save us. <clears throat> so, uh, let's read some scripture. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of your works. It's not of your flesh. It's not of your blood. It's not anything you do with the circumcision of the hands. You can't uh, circumcise your flesh to be good enough to enter into heaven. Jesus already did that for us. <clears throat> Romans 5.15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, that's Adam, we're dead, we're like walking zombies in our flesh, especially if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ or believed him for your salvation, you are completely a, wa a zombie. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Thank you, Lord God. Romans 3, 23 through 26, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We have all come short of the glory of God. We have all missed the mark. We have all missed the target. That's what sin means. You're falling short of the law. You cannot be good enough. <clears throat> Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We are justified freely through Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood <laughs> to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. That people say, oh, that's, that's past sins. No, that's all sin. He died once for all sin. All, not just past. For all the sins of man. Don't get confused. 1 Corinthians 15, 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. We are corrupt. Our flesh and our blood is corrupt. People need blood transfusions. If you're under the law, you need a blood transfusion. If you think you have to earn or work your way to heaven, you need the blood of Jesus to cover you. You need his bloods running through your veins because your blood ain't going to get you there. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. It's only by the blood of Jesus and our confession of faith in Jesus Christ. And we believe that in our heart. We're, we're, we're a sinner. We need a savior. We're saved by his grace. Okay, and our faith in that, that's how we're saved. It has nothing to do with being obedient to the law, but it has everything to do with our mindset of being obedient to the true gospel, which is Jesus came down, was born of man. God came down, put on a robe of flesh, was born of man, died on the cross, fulfilled, paid our sin debt put our sin into remission and then rose again on the third day. He took the keys. He went down to hell and took the keys to death in Hades. And now we have those keys, keys to the kingdom. Death will not reign over us. And it's not anything you do in your dirty blood or your flesh or your DNA. It's by faith alone. It's, a, it's the greatest, greatest news in the whole planet. 
It's the good news. It's our blessed assurance. That's how we know we're saved. That's how we know we're saved. Because if you're trying to measure, put the measuring stick to your, your, your own flesh and your own goodness and your own whatever you think is great about you, it's not going to measure up. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We're born into sin from Adam, but only through the blood of Jesus and what he did and his work and his own flesh that had no sin is what gets us to heaven and our faith in that is what gives us eternal life. Eternal is everlasting. It's once you believe, once you believe in your heart, the gospel, you are born again and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not come and go from you. It doesn't hover around your head. It doesn't see you crying and weeping and begging to God, flying through the neighborhood, and then, oh, let's have mercy on this one. She's, she's going to try to do good. That's not how it works. I used to think that when I was a Pentecostal. Lord, wherever you are in the sky, come down, the Holy Spirit, and touch me. No, he dwells inside of you. <clears throat> and he never leaves you or forsakes you. He seals you. Like when you, the king stamps the envelope shut with the wax and then sticks his ring in it and seals it. And that is eternal life. It's once saved, always saved. You cannot debunk eternal life. That's the craziest baloney I've ever heard. Now you're just making narratives to suit what you think you believe and what you think your pastor told you and what you think that God has told you. And that's not true. We're all saved by God's grace through our faith. And that's what we, we're obedient to. And that's where we put our trust. All right, guys, I love you and uh, get a blood transfusion today because you need it because your own blood's not going to make it. If you think you're going to stand before a righteous and just God and glorify in front of him because of things that you did in your flesh when we're not under the law anymore, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Only the blood of Jesus was good enough to pay our sin debt. And put our sins into remission and make us white as snow and without spot or blemish or wrinkle. If you, you can't earn that with your filthy flesh, you just can't. This is what, what the scripture says. Okay, I love you guys and God bless you.